Hi, in this video we are going to learn about India, the location, political divisions and physical features. The three important topics we are going to see here is location, political divisions of India, physical division of India. In the physical divisions of India, we have six subdivisions, the northern mountains, northern plain, the Thar Desert, the Plateau of Peninsula of India, Coastal Plains and the Islands. Again, in the northern mountains, we have three classifications, the Trans-Himalayan Range, the Himalayan Ranges and the Purvanjal Hills. The Himalayan Ranges are again classified into three sections, that is the Himadri or the Greater Himalayas, Himachal or Lesser Himalayas and the Shivalik or the Outer Himalayas. Next, in the Northern Plains, we have three parts, the Punjab Haryana Plain, the Ganga Plain and the Brahmaputra Plain. Next, the Plateau of Peninsular India. Here, we have two parts, the Central Highlands and the Deccan Plateau. Then, the Hostel Plains. The Hostel Plains is divided into the Western Hostel Plains and the Eastern Hostel Plains. Again, the Eastern Hostel Plains is divided into the Northern Circuits and the Coromandel Host. Then the islands. We have two islands, the Andaman Nicobar Islands and the Lakshadweep group of islands. India's location. India lies in the southern part of Asia. It is the seventh largest and the second most populated country in the world. North to south, the Indian mainland extends from latitudes 8 degree 4 minutes north to 37 degree 6 minutes north, covering the distance of 3,210 kilometers. Its longitudinal extent is 68 degree 7 minutes east to 97 degree 25 minutes east, covering the distance of 2,933 kilometers. India lies entirely in the northern hemisphere with the Tropic of Cancer passing roughly through the middle of the country. India is surrounded by oceans of seas on three sides. To the west lies the Arabian Sea, to the south lies the Indian Ocean and to the east lies the Bay of Bengal. To the north, India is separated from the rest of Asia by the Himalayan mountain ranges. The countries which border India include Pakistan to the west, Afghanistan to the northwest, China, Nepal and Bhutan to the north and northeast, and Bangladesh and Myanmar to the east. To the south, across the Park Strait, lies the island country of Sri Lanka. India's coastline almost runs straight. As a result, the length of the coastline, including the islands, is only 7,570 km. Two island groups that are the part of India are the Lakshadweep Islands in the Arabian Sea and the Andaman Nicobar Islands in the Bay of Bengal, while Kanyakumari is the southernmost tip of the Indian mainland. India's territory extends up to Indra Point at the tip of the Nicobar Islands. The Central Meridian and Indian Standard Time there are 30 degrees of longitude between the eastern and western ends of the country. This means that there is a difference of 2 hours in time between the two ends. The sun rises and sets 2 hours earlier in Arunachala Pradesh than over the coast of Gujarat. For the sake of uniformity, the local time along 82 and half degree east longitude, which is central meridian of the country, is taken as the Indian standard time. It is 5 and a half hours ahead of GFT, that is Greenwich Mean Time. Political Divisions of India The Democratic Republic of India is made up of 28 states and 8 union territories. The states are ruled by elected state governments, while the union territories are ruled by the central government directly. In terms of area, Rajasthan is the largest state of India while well, Goa is the smallest one. Physical Divisions of India India can be divided into six major physical regions. They are the Northern Mountains, Northern Plains, Star Desert, 
the plateau of peninsular india the coastal plains and the islands the northern mountains this is the region of towering young old mountain that stretches in the wide sweeping arc across northern and northeastern india effectively isolating the country from the rest of asia the northern mountains can be further divided into three mountain system they are the trans himalayan ranges the himalayan ranges and the purvanchal hills the trans himalayan ranges the trans himalayan ranges lie north of the himalayas and run parallel to it they include the sanskar range the ladakh range and the eastern part of the Ka karakoram range the indus river flows between the sanskar and the ladakh ranges the himalayan ranges the himalayas are the highest mountain ranges in the world of the many chains of young fold mountains that radiate from pamir nath the himalayas are the southernmost they stretch across north india for almost 2500 km the width of the himalayas from south to north varies between 200 and 400 km the himalayan system consists of three distinct ranges the himadri the himachal and the shivalik ranges the himadri are the greater himalayas this is the highest and the northernmost range of the himalayas it extends across north india from the northwest to the southwest the total length of the range is close to 2300 km although the average height of the range is 6100 m there are many peaks over 8000 m in this range some of them are mount everest that is 8850 m kanchanjunga it has 8586 m daulagiri 8167 m annapurna 8091 m and nanda devi 7816 m of these mount everest and daulagiri lie in nepal kanchanjunga lies partially in nepal and partially in, in india of the peaks that lie completely in india nanda devi is the tallest thus the himadri contains some of the tallest peaks in the world these snow covered mountains are the source of many glaciers one such glacier is the gangotri from which the river ganga originates himachal or the lesser himalayas this range lies to the south of the himadri and has an average height of 4500 meters it consists of bir banjal and the dauladar ranges they extend across jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh uttar pradesh and uttarakhand among these ranges are some beautiful valleys like kashmir kullu and kangra and the hill stations like shimla mussoorie manali and darjeeling below the snow line there are thick evergreen forest the shivaliks are the outer himalayas this range extends north and westward for about 1600 km from sikkim through nepal uttar pradesh and uttarakhand up to pakistan its elevation ranges from 900 to 1200 m the shivaliks is not a continuous range and is broken in many places by open valleys called duns dehradun is the hill station in one such valley this region is home to both broadleaf deciduous trees like oak and birch and evergreen coniferous trees like deodar and pine at the foothills of the shivalik lies in the terai region This is the zone of flat land characteristic by swamps tall grasses and dense sal forest it is inhabited by the variety of wild animals in some places the forest has been cleared for rice cultivation and animal rearing the purvanchal hills 
From Arunachal Pradesh, the Himalayas bend and run southwards as the Purvanchal Hills. Its main ranges in India are the Patkai Bum, that is in Arunachal Pradesh, Naha Hills in Nagaland, Manipur Hills, Mizo or Luzai Hill, that is in Mizoram, Tribura Range and Barail Range. The Arakan Yom, Baho and Lushai Hills form the boundary between India and Myanmar. The Purvanjal merges with the Mahalaya Plateau in the west. The Garo, Gashi and Jaintia Hills lie on the Mahalaya Plateau. Passes There are many passes in Himalayan ranges which enable people to travel and carry on trade across the northern mountains. Though these passes are at high altitude and remain snow covered most of the year, they are often the only means of communication across these towering ranges. Soji La, the word, word La means pass in Tibetan, connects Srinagar to Lek in Ladakh. Shipki La connects Tibet to China to Himachal Pradesh. Nadu La connects Tibet to Sikkim and Bomdi La connects Arunachal Pradesh to Bhutan and Tibet. The importance of the northern mountains. The northern mountains form a natural boundary separating India from Central Asia. They affect the climate of India in two ways. They block the moisture laden south southwest monsoon winds and force the winds to rise bringing heavy rainfall to the Himalayan foothills and to the northern plains of India. They also prevent the cold winds of Central Asia from entering India in winter. The melting snow on the mountain gives rise to perennial rivers like the Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra. The forested slopes of these mountains are storehouses of timber and medicinal herbs. They are also home to many wild animals. The mountains and valleys attract tourists from all over the world. Shimla, Srinagar, Missouri, Nainital and Darjeeling are some popular tourist spots.